Hey guys, it's me again. Well, it's just been a couple of days. Um, still working on my scarf. Guess I can show y'all that. It's getting there, but I, <laughs> yeah, I should have been done with it by now. I'm seriously, yeah. I, wait, please pray for me because um. About to do an amigurumi. I don't want to, but I, I told a five year old that I would. So there you are. Once you tell a five year old, it's written in stone, people. In stone. They don't forget. Oh, she's already reminded me three times. And I got my book again. So I wanted to open it so that I could see it with you guys and see which one I actually got because you know what? I forgot. Yeah, I hate it when I do that. Oh, and you know that Michael's order that uh um bag the other day? I looked at my invoice and I had overpaid. So I called them and um by the way, their customer service is the really the mom.com they are so good um they went through and she went through and she went through everything to find out why and, and then she just said look here's what we're going to do and so she did all her stuff and they refunded me the difference which i thought was really nice because i mean i could have got store credit but they went ahead and just you know gave me Mine back, which I thought was really nice because I mean, whatever. If I'd known, I would have bought more. Yeah, so maybe it was a good thing they didn't tell me this part is empty. And oh, a popular titles book. Oh, yeah, and I also got a couple of books for me. I read a lot. So, a whole lot. And here we go. Granny Square Book by Margaret Hubert. Um, apparently, this is the second edition. I never understood these kind of. Did y'all ever understand why the cover did this thing? I know some people think it's to mark your place, but after a while, that would tear that thing up, wouldn't it? And then it wouldn't be as pretty. Ooh, look at this, y'all. That'd be pretty. Oh, how cute is that? And, of course, they got instructions for all of it. I think it's got every kind of granny square you could uh, imagine in here. Quite a few, actually. And I like the way their, their instructions include the little diagram thingies. Yeah, I really like those. So, yeah, I'm liking this book. Edward R. Hamilton, people. I got it for, I can't remember what I paid for. It was like six, maybe six dollars for it. I know it usually goes for like 24 bucks, but it, it's, you know, I got it for six, so I'm happy. Um, I think that's about it, y'all. I just wanted to jump on real quick, open that, show y'all the book. See how everything's going. Um, you know what kills me, y'all, is I think of stories when I'm not recording. And I forget to write them down. Yeah, I do that a lot. It sucks. But, yeah, because, you know, when you get older, you have short-term memory loss. I can remember things all the way back to I was two years old. But where I was in 15 minutes ago, couldn't tell you. Nope, no idea. 
No, I'm only kidding. It does get on your nerves if you can't remember something that you were going to say. You know, if you, I've got to do like Madonna and get me a notebook and start writing stuff down. Because although my life was, you know, I grew up with five kids in a family. So we had things, you know, that, that happened that you would be like, what? But it was just normal to us. And, um, I don't know, I think one of the strangest things that ever happened to me when I was young, when I was 13, is the father of two of the boys I babysat hit on me. It was my dad's friend. I didn't say anything because I was, like, freaked out. So... That was kind of weird, wasn't it? Kind of, ew. Yeah. I thought so, too. Oh, yeah. Um. See. Oh. When I lived in Reserve, Louisiana, which is right next to Laplace. So, I mean, they pretty much told us we lived in Laplace, but our phone number was reserved right next door to Laplace. We couldn't call across the street. Yeah, fun. So, um, hang on. Summer storms are pretty bad in the South. For those of us who live here, we know, we accept it. It's a part of life. For those of us in certain sections of the South, it's called Tornado Alley. Now, at the time, we were living in a place that was not even close to Tornado Alley. But one night, we were all sleeping, and my dad wakes up because he hears something, and he looks out his bedroom window across, you know, outside the subdivision and sees a tornado coming. Flat at us. And he didn't have nothing, no time to do anything but grab my mother <laughs> and yank her down onto the floor. My mom was mad because he woke her up. <laughs> but what happened after that was, after he saw the tornado coming, is that he hit the gymnasium of my school, of my old school, and destroyed. A good part of it um, and it bounced it enough so that it went towards the other end of our subdivision down towards the back end and it leveled houses that were like five houses down from us it leveled a whole bunch of homes and um, two of our friends lived down on that end and um, surprisingly and thank Thank God, nobody got killed in all of that mess. So, God was looking out for all of us in that subdivision. So, that was, that was pretty cool. But, years later, I found out after I left that another tornado came through, and it did take out our house, where our house was. So, right there, yeah. Oh, did I ever tell y'all the story of how I found out I was claustrophobic? It's actually kind of appropriate because right now, Mardi Gras is going on. I love Mardi Gras. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's a lot of fun. They, you know, they have the floats. They throw the beads. They throw candy. Um... It's just a lot of fun for families and stuff. And you got to be careful if you go down to New Orleans and places like that to go. Because, you know, they do have pickpockets there. Um, also, we went to a bunch of parades. But the one we went to in Metairie or Kenner, which is right outside of New Orleans. It's like a sleep, sleepy suburb of New Orleans. I mean, it's just like right outside of New Orleans. And then, um, but we went to the parade there, and it's jam-packed. People are, you know, 
everywhere. People are everywhere. And I was fine up until I walked up towards the float and people swoop like that. And I started to go down. I almost passed out in a crowd of people. My mom yanking my arm, asking me, what is wrong with you? I feel like I'm going to fall down. And she took me back and she said, you sit there, don't get up. And I'm like, okay. So, but that's how I found out I was claustrophobic, y'all. Because every time I'm in a crowd of people, I like, I barely can catch a breath. It's that bad. Um, but I'm, I'm getting better. It, it's hard, but I'm getting better. I'm forcing myself to do things I, I'm uncomfortable with. Which I think I would suggest to everybody the wonder to face your fears. Although I will tell you this, there's one fear I'm never facing, and that is spiders. They can go get smooshed in my house. As if they come near my house, they are all smooshed. It. I ain't playing no games with them. Or snakes. Yeah. Although I have been working on that too, believe it or not. But back to facing your fears. Facing your fears is a good thing as long as you do it in a controlled environment. Don't just go climb to the top of a thing and then look down and then have a vertigo thing and fall off. No, people, please don't. Please don't. If you're scared of heights, then go up to the uh, top of, uh, where, where did I go? I went somewhere and I looked down. Looked too down. And yeah, I realized I was like really scared of heights. But if you're scared of heights, you can work on it in increments like um go up some stairs and look down go further up the next time look down most people aren't scared of heights until they reach like about I don't know, 20 to 30 feet off the ground once that's once they're up that high they look down and they see how far that ground is is when they start to panic that's why you gotta do it in increments and also, it helps if you tie yourself to something. Yeah. I don't know anybody who did that. Mm -mm. So, anyway, I thought I'd jump on. Say hello. Show you my book. Uh, wish y'all a happy week. Y'all have a blessed week. And if y'all go on Edward R. Hamilton, it's the Greenish Square Book, second edition. So, oh, we don't even say it there. It says, okay, Granny Square Book, second edition, but that says so many motifs. Y'all, you know I'm not doing this wrong. Anyway, y'all have a great day. Enjoy it and have a blessed week. I'm excited for y'all. Have a good week. And... Don't let anybody tell you what you can and cannot do. Bye, y'all.